More than 40 years ago, a coalition founded House of Ruth, Maryland. The organization has come a long way since its first shelter opened on North Calvert Street, but the need to support women and their families hasn't wavered at all. Joining us now from House of Ruth is Azure Brown. Good to see you. Hi, good to meet you. This can be a tough conversation, I think, for some, because I think it takes courage Indeed. Uh, to yeah. turn to help. Do you feel that over at House of Ruth? Absolutely. Um, and I will say sometimes the, the biggest step is just reaching out, right? Because yeah. there's, you know, some things you have to come to terms with before you, you reach out to help for help and, you know, coping with stuff for a long time and coming to terms with the idea that you might need help beyond what you can do for yourself. What is the approach that House of Ruth takes? I'm guessing when that person walks through the door for the very first time, mm -hmm. what kind of work do you do with them? Well, a uh, little bit of everything. So we're yeah. a <laughs> comprehensive agency. We mm -hmm. have an emergency shelter, 24 hour hotline, a uh, legal program that supports folks seeking protective orders and oh. things like that, as well as counseling support. The, the number is what really caught my eye, 5,000 adult victims and 417 children right. as well. I think we, we focus on, I think, the, the partners in this, but the extended family get, is affected as well. That's true. That's true. And we also provide uh, support for family members who may not know how to approach folks or, you know, sometimes we have multi-generational living, so yeah. there may be abuse going on in the home. and. It's not just the immediate partners and their children that are affected. And I feel like this is something that's not solved in the first visit. No, uh, absolutely. <laughs> yes. talk, talk to me about the, the returning of people and coming through the first time to make it comfortable mm -hmm. enough to return the second time. Yeah, and sometimes it, it just kind of depends on where their entry point is. So okay. there are times where folks are, you know, this may be the first time they're coming to terms with something. They just want to get acquainted with what's available, sure. um, figure out, you know, what's feasible for them, maybe get some safety planning support, and at a later time, you know, come back and engage in our counseling services, or maybe that's the point where they enter our emergency shelter or something like yeah. that. So um, we don't have any, you know, restrictions on, you know, how far it's been since their last abuse incident and things mm. like that. We just want to be there to support when they're ready. Do you feel like there's, um, and I don't know a better word, but you feel like there's sometimes a, a sense of shame maybe, uh, and, uh -huh. and, that, and that keeps people from speaking up. Yeah, and that's part of, you know, the goal of our prevention services. They yeah. feel the more educated the community is, um, the more support folks will, will have, mm -hmm. and maybe we'll change some of those social norms that, that blame uh, victims and survivors for their experiences with abuse. We always think of, I think, and I use we generally, the, the holidays time of uh, celebratory. Right. You know, we're there, family, what could go wrong kind right. of thing. But I'm guessing you see some numbers change as we approach the holidays. We do indeed. Um, so um, we tend to see an uptick in um, uh, reports of domestic violence yeah. this time of year. Um, and if you think about it, you mentioned celebrations, right? Yeah. And we think celebrations, often there's alcohol involved with that. Uh, there's also, you know, a little bit of social pressure with the holidays. You understand you want to make kind of perfect memories for your family. Um, yeah. Sometimes that's a reason why people might suffer in silence because this doesn't, this isn't the time I want to break up my family right. or something like that when, um, you know, the, it just appears that it might be best for their children or for their family for them to stay. So, um, yeah, you know, we did. And sometimes people don't reach out during the holidays, particularly for that reason, because yeah. it just doesn't feel like the right time. What's the first step in reaching out? Like, what, what what's the first hurdle that people have to get over? to pick up the phone. Um, and maybe it is that, you know, kind of shame feelings or shame yeah. or embarrassment or, you know, the idea that they are somehow, somehow harming their family by reaching out for help. Yeah. So I, you know, as a first step, you know, check out our website. We're at oh, okay. atruth.org. You know, we'll talk, you can check on the types of ways we can help, maybe put in a call, ask some questions. Okay. There's no, uh, you know, pressure for people to engage in certain ways when they reach out the first time. About 30 seconds or so left. There'll be people now we're in the season of giving who want to give and they're looking for yes. an organization. Let's just say it ends up being the House of Ruth. Yes. What's the best thing they can do and, and what do you need from folks? Well, this time of year, I will say we do um, have an adopt-a-family program for, oh. for our um for our active clients. Um, from what I hear this morning, we've uh, gotten a lot of community support with that. Wow. We've got, you know, donor matches for the families. Wow. But I would encourage people to explore other ways to give. Um, if you go to our website, like I mentioned, there are, you know, donate tabs. And it's not just about, you know, financial donations. Sure. While those are always helpful, yeah. um, there's a myriad of ways and you can check them all out all on right. our website. Ms. Brown, thank you for the time. Thank you. We appreciate it as always.